What's your take on Saka choosing uh, England over Nigeria? At this point in time, I choose to believe that it was a no-brainer. Mm. Kai Saka has been through the ranks at England and currently he was playing under-21 football for England and has played in the European Championship qualifiers as mm. well. And then he's been in great form playing with his teammates, Rhys Nelson and Eddie Ketia and a, a whole lot of other great young English players. And he's part of a golden generation in England, mm. really. So for me, I believe it was always going to be England because the coaching system and the way they've set up their teams, Kai Saka has found a way to just how I say pretty blend exactly mm. he has blended very well and then with last season and Arsenal he became so much more better he became so much more versatile yeah versatility is the word right now uh, for a long stretch of the season Arsenal did not have Kieran Tierney and Kolasinac available and then it was Bukayo Saka who was in that left back position you also see him at the left wing back position and also recently towards the end of last season you saw him in that number eight position as a double eight, mm. you know, alongside Danny Ceballos and then Granit Xhaka as the pivot. Also, you would see him either on the right wing side or on the left wing side. So he provides so many options. So obviously, England, they know stars when they see them because mm. they've had a whole lot of stars over the years. Why would they want to let him go? Mm. Ele um, 11 assists in all competitions, about four goals as well for a 19-year-old. Has the highest number of assists for a teenager in a single season. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant in my own opinion. Mm. So, I mean, choosing England, representing England, was a no-brainer for me. All right, we have uh, Tunde Adelak on the head scout of the Super Eagles of Nigeria joining us uh, to speak more on uh, the issues surrounding Bukayo Saka choosing England over Nigeria. Good to have you with us, Tunde. Hello there, good morning. Good morning. I'm sure you're not happy with the news that broke concerning Bukayo Saka. I'm not unhappy at all. I mm. have no reason to be unhappy at um, the news that Bukayo Saka has been called up to play for England, obviously. Um, I need to uh, correct a mindset here, and um, your last speaker has spoken quite well eloquently about it. Um, Bukayo Saka was born in England. He only knew England as his home. Mm. Um, he grew up through the ranks in England. His football, he cut his football teeth in England. It was only natural that if he makes it to the elite grade, England would recognize him because they have recognized him at the age group level. And therefore, um, like, your, like the previous guest has said, it's an absolute no-brainer. He was called to come and play for England, and he has decided to go and play for England. It's, um, it's absolutely natural. I think it's absolutely natural that um, any talent that was brought up in a system will be rewarded with a call-up to the national team. So I'm not unhappy. I'm actually happy for him. Um, because he is making very good progress. He's an absolutely talented player, um, a naturally gifted, versatile player, and therefore very happy for him and his family for this call-up. Mm. All right, uh, let, let's talk about the NFF now and Bukayo Saka. You know this happened with um, Fikayo Tomori and, of course, Tammy Abraham. And we also learned that the NFF president reached out to these players to come play for Nigeria. Did the NFF reach out to Bukayo Saka to come feature for Nigeria? I personally spoke to Bukayo's dad. Mm. I spoke to his family. I spoke to his agent. And I spoke to a few people around him. Um, Bukayo, as of that time, was 18. I can't go and make a direct call to him mm. because he is young and I don't want to turn his head unnecessarily. But I spoke to the people, the support network around him. Personally, I did that. And then um, the word out there was, well, let's wait and see. Bukayo is still young. He's still 18. We don't want to lumber him with the choice of uh, this is deciding whether he's going to play for this or for that. Let him just focus on his football because he has a lot of years ahead of him, which is exactly what I did. I respected that and I stepped back. But like I did with every other player, those that succeeded in coming to us and those that we didn't succeed in getting, I always give the decision to them. We give them the decision to, to make because it is their careers at the end of the day. And I don't want to be held responsible for it if it goes right or if it goes wrong. It is for them and it is for them 100%. Very true. Let's take our minds back to um, Agbolao. When he left, he, he decided also left to play for England and the other players who are of Nigerian descent who also dumped Nigeria for England. We know how the story ended. Do you think Bukayo Saka has what it takes to maintain an England shirt if he gets that chance to play, uh, to get a starting shirt for England? Does he have what it takes to maintain that? 
I mean, look, the, there's two things. I'll, I'll correct an impression. We didn't lose Bukayo Saka to England because we never had him. We never had him. He was he was an England player, and we always have to respect the fact that he was brought up in England. We did not invest a single penny in the development of these players from Nigeria. We didn't invest anything into them. So we don't have the right to claim entitlement to them to the point of saying we lost them. Fikayo, Tami, Agbonla. Oh, I spoke to Agbonla in 2003. You know, when I said to him, come and play for Nigeria. And he said, well, I'm going to have to decide on it. Now, when they make that decision, like we all do in our respective professional lives, if we make a decision on what we want to do for ourselves, we live by that decision. Mm. If if Gabi uh, didn't make it in the ranks of England because he chose England over Nigeria, I think he's got to live with it himself. And we've got to move on. And we've got to move on with the ones that we have got. As for Bukayo, like I said, he is a very good player, a versatile player. He can play anywhere on the pitch. He just wants to play. He's a youngster. He's got all that it takes. And I believe very firmly that, you know, with his continued progression in Arsenal, uh, the sky's the limit for him. All the best to him. If he makes it into the top grade and continues consistency, great for him. He will never not be um, a Nigerian. Anthony Joshua competed for Great Britain in the Olympics. Mm. He's a world champion now, and we're still claiming that we own him because mm. we're proud of him, and we can still be proud of people, even if they go out there and play and feature for other countries. Mm. Very, very true. Uh, can you take us through the um, scouting system of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, how these players are being, players are being scouted, and um, how they're also being convinced to come represent Nigeria? Well, I mean, we've got, at the moment, we've got probably about five to 600 players of Nigerian wow. origin in Europe, all over, based in Nigeria, based abroad, um, those who were born abroad, those who were born in Nigeria, we've got probably 600 of them. Wow. And we look at all of them. There's no player that they will call my attention to. Every now and again, I receive the odd message from people, fans, media, and all that, that is not already on my Wise Scouts database that I have a look at. If we look at them, if they fit the bill, it's not only being technically gifted and being good alone, it's also those who will fit into the playing style and philosophy of the head coach who makes the ultimate decision as to who comes and joins and joins the Nigerian football team. And therefore, we look at them, we look at what they've got, we look at their playing style, their ability, what they can do, what they cannot do. And then we, we narrow it down. We have a very broad database of 600. Then we have a class B, which is a smaller database. When we shift them from huge talent into particular talent, and that's probably about 90 to 100. And then it is from that 90 to 100 that we now narrow it down to the players that we end up picking to come and represent Nigeria in the national team. Wow, wow, such a tough one. But I, I, I know that you're doing a great job and we're expecting more and the best for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Okwe has a question um, to ask you. Uh, good morning, Sadilaku. Um, first of all, I must commend you for the work that you've been doing so far. In the last one year or so, I love the crop of talent that have been added to the Super Eagle squad. But then, you know, when most of them come into the squad and then they are being interviewed, a lot of them actually say that sometimes Genetro reaches out to them. So I want to know how involved is Genetro in this process? Um, I understand what you've said currently. So when you do meet players and you feel like they are a great prospect, at what point in time does Genetro sometimes chip in and try and get these players over to come and represent Nigeria? Well, Genatroa is the ultimate arbiter in this one. The groundwork is done by myself and a few others. <clears throat> we talk to the players, we talk to their families, we make Genatroa the ultimate person that will end up talking to them when he has made the decision that this player is one that I could use. What we do is we put together um, a, a profile, a bio of the player that we're looking uh, that we're looking at, whether it is for him to come and represent Nigeria or whether he's Nigerian already and <clears throat> we just want to give him a call up. We will put together a bio on him, we send it to Ghana, and <clears throat> he will look at it, he will decide whether he wants to see more, in which case, at, at which time, I can now send video clips of what 
I have of him, not just video clips from YouTube or whatever, but specific technical performance analysis video clips from our software providers. They will now, I'll now send to, to, to the head coach. He looks at them. And when he likes, if he likes what he says, he says, okay, go ahead, reach out to them. Let's see whether we can get a process through. I now reach out to the players through their agents, through their families, through them directly. I talk to them. And then at that point, when the decision has been made, when it now looks like it's positive, that it's looking good, then I can now pass the details of the player to the head coach. Oh. There's no point us giving the head coach details of a player for him to be turned down personally. I think it's going to be a slight on his status and in his person. Yeah. So we have to know that there is a good chance of this happening before we now pass the details on to the head coach for him to now put the final stamp, rubber stamp on it and say, OK, we have looked at you and we are looking to call you up. Mm. All right. Uh, that's uh, an amazing job you're doing, I must say, and I commend your creativity and how you assess these players. Thank you very much. Appreciate that.